I'm gonna show you how to cast something like this plastic hand in metal without needing any fancy foundry equipment. Hi, I'm the Maker Monster, and this is the Maker Monster Show. Our friend the Bandersaurus back there, he's teaching a class right now, and he's got a little bit of a problem. He likes using this finger pointer thing, but people aren't taking him seriously because it looks like a kid's toy. So he asked me if I could make something that looks a little bit more professional. So let's get going and I'll show you how I did it. First, I had to cut the hand off. Perfect, I am nailing it so far. I spent way too long looking for a scrap piece of melamine before realizing my entire workbench is melamine, which means I can make a mold right on top of it. So I glued the hand down just about anywhere. And then I grabbed a cardboard tube from my collection that just happens to fit perfectly. One more reason why you should always save everything. I sprayed a little bit of mold release on the inside of the tube to make it easier to tear off later. Then I just glued it down to the table with a little bit of hot glue. This is what I used for the mold. It's a super simple silicone for mold making. Just pour out equal parts and mix them together. Then just slowly pour it into the mold box. Pouring in a slow, thin stream will make it way less likely to trap any bubbles. Then we've just got to wait a little bit until it's cured. Here's a tip for you. If you take a little bit of denature or rubbing alcohol and wipe it over some hot glue, it'll soften the glue enough so you can just pull it right off. Taking the cardboard off was just a matter of cutting down the side and then tearing it off. Wrestling the hand out of the mold might have been the most difficult part of this entire process. But once I did that, I realized I could do finger guns and obviously I had to do that for a little bit. <laughs> okay, the mold is done, now for the metal part. And this is what I used to make that happen some brass powder that'll be mixed into some clear resin. So I poured out equal amounts of both parts of resin and then poured out an equal amount of the metal powder. So I ended up with equal amounts of the two parts of resin and the metal powder. Mixing the powder into one of the halves first before mixing the two parts together will make it way easier to get everything thoroughly mixed before the resin starts setting. So I mixed the brass powder into the part B of the resin first. Then I mixed in part A and poured it into the mold. Now, these metal powders can get expensive, and part of the whole reason we're doing it this way is to get the same look for way cheaper. So I only mixed up a small amount. If I were to mix up enough to cast this entire thing solid, or if I were casting something even bigger, it could get real expensive real fast. So instead, I only mixed up just enough to fill the mold a little bit. Then I took a chip brush and spread that out over the entire surface. Basically, what you'll end up with is a thin layer of the metal resin on the outside of the casting that we can fill with regular resin. Like an M&M, but with resin instead of chocolate and candy. You know. So I mixed up some black resin and filled the rest with that. I didn't fill it up all the way so I could stick the handle in. Then I just had to wait. And wait. And wait. Until the resin was finally cured and I could take it out. And do more finger guns. Flashing can just be trimmed off with some snips. Now, it doesn't really look like metal here, so grab some steel wool and start buffing it with that. That'll start bringing out some of the shine. And what's cool about this being actual metal powder and not just paint or something like that, is that you can use actual metal patinas on it. Something like this brass darkener. So brush on some of that and watch it darken. Then just buff it with some steel wool again. It adds just a little bit more depth to the casting. And if you want to push it even further, you can use some shoe polish too. Just brush it on, Maybe practice your twirls a little bit as it hardens, and then buff it off again. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now to just finish the handle. I use some of this stain polyurethane combo stuff to just quickly finish it off. And that's it, a metal pointer that should help the Bandersaurus be taken a little bit more seriously as a teacher. If you want to see another cool way of turning something into metal, check out this video on electroforming. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Bye!